Welcome back everyone and in today's video we're going to continue uh, creating a n more constraints and in this one we're going to do a uh, hinge constraint. In the previous video we did like a cone so it, a lot of the same things kind of kind of applies here. We're still going to um, define a plane and then um, use projection to kind of get things in the right place and I'm not a big math person so I can't do things with like quintorians very easily so we're going to actually convert um, a rotation into vectors and then we're going to do basically vectors um, um, unit vectors so this way we can just do simple math uh, simple vector math to kind of just calculate everything and put everything in, in planes and whatnot and do projection so this way we can kind of control and get, get a, and it makes it's very easy to visualize it too when everything's vectors so uh, let's just get to some of the whiteboard stuff and this time I will do a better job of whiteboarding try to anyway uh, I know the mouse or my stylus does not record so I have to I'll remember to when I point at things I'll use my um, my mouse for pointing and I'll use my stylus for drawing um, all right so a rotate or a quatorian basically is a rotation on a sphere it's you know how does a sphere rotate that's how I interpret it anyway and um, and the way I interpret what a quintorian is, to me, so how, I, how I visualize it, is a quintorian rotates and kind of gives you a new forward direction and pretty much a defined up direction. You know, like the twist, uh, the, the the rotation um, that you do. Uh, a quintorian really is just an axis, and then at what uh, and what angle of rotation do you do on that axis? That's all we're doing. <clears throat> so, taking that idea of just an axis of rotation. The hinge kind of fits perfectly with it, with that idea. Um, so we need to define what our forward direction is. That the that forward direction, and then our rotating axis. So, like I said, we're going to take a sphere, but we're going to take a slice of a sphere and just make a circle. So it becomes a two-dimensional circle, and we have a center point, and we have our, our forward direction that has like no degrees of rotation. Uh, once we know that, you know, we have to define the axis. We have to, we have to define where north is and where left and right is. And so if, if this is forward and we know where up is, it's up here in this direction, then it becomes very easy to determine um, our actual rotating axis because it's the... Um, cross product of our up and our forward. So this way we didn't have our axis defined. In this case, let's say our axis is we're just doing it on the X plane. So that's going to be like the first thing we need to do. We need to define a point or an, an axis. We need to define an axis, like what's, what's forward, what's up, and what's down. This really helps us out. Uh, once we have that, we then need to define a plane. And a plane is defined by a point and a direction, and that's and once we it's because of the hinge we already have all that information because our axis our point is going to be origin, and our direction is going to be our axis that we rotate by. So that is going to define our plane in three D space. So this three so this three dimensional circle. Um, can then be treated like a flat 2D circle, okay? And then it just points here at zero degrees. Um, so that's what we're doing. So like, like I said, let me just do a quick recap. First, define an axis. We know what our forward direction is going to be because we're going to use our contorian and we're going to apply it to the forward direction, which would be... Um, Zero, zero, one, one positive in the Z axis. So that will give us our forward direction. We will then determine an up direction, which would normally be zero, one, zero. And doing the cross product of that gives us our X axis, our left axis. So we know our forward, we know up and left. So we're good. And by using that, we already have everything that we need because we're going to use origin as the center point of our plane. And we're going to use the x axis, our axis of actual rotation, as our direction for our plane. Um, <clears throat> the reason why is because there's two things, there's two criteria to a hinge um, constraint or a limitation. First, we need to make sure that 
the axis of rotation is exact. If for some reason the axis of rotation is not exact, we need to snap it back into that place. Secondly, we need to limit its um, rotation on that axis. So we're gonna have, we're gonna define um, two values, not just one. So we're gonna define basically not necessarily in the minimum and maximum. It's more like what it is our up maximum and which are down maximum um, the way illustrated so we have here like our 2d plane right of our circle that we're gonna actually do the rotation on um, we're gonna say since this is zero degrees we can go essentially 45 uh, we can go 180 degrees in the, at all directions so we're gonna say we, we we're gonna limit here at 45 degrees going up and we're going to go 45 degrees going down <clears throat> so that's our limitation. So this part, this arc of the circle is how much rotation we're allowed to do um, if, if on the axis of rotation. So for some for some reason we're here, we need to snap it back into this minimum. If we're here, we need to snap it back to here as well. So that's so once we every so once we have the axis we can then limit the actual rotation of that angle. Like I said, but the first step is we need to make sure um, the axis is correctly. So if this point is, uh, if this point right here is forward and this, uh, and this is our left axis or right axis, whatever language you're using, you know, some languages use the right, some to use the left, whatever, that whichever side's positive for X. So, so if for some like for some reason you decide to add a quartorian rotation that creates a point that's not on that circle. So the forward direction is let's say is here, which then creates let me do a better one because that looks like it's on a circle. So here. So that means its axis of rotation is more likely more likely like around here. So we need to check to see if the axis is different. And we can just do something um, pretty simple. I think it's just um, like a dot product of it. Uh, and um, I think it's a dot product. I have to look at the code. I forgot. Um, but if, if, it's, if uh, the dot product is like a, it's whatever value, whatever operation we apply on the two quartorians, if, if the value is under a certain th uh, over a certain threshold, we automatically snap back the axis. Um, and on top of that, um, even if something is off, like even it's off axis, we have to keep its angle. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take, we're going to project this point onto this plane. So if we have this point, so let's say, first of all, like we know this point here. So we know we need to, we need to snap it. So we know the axis of rotation needs to be fixed. So we do that after the fact. But first, we need to check. We also need to find out what angle is, because even though we snap its um, axis back, we need because since everything is in vectors, we need to we need the angle of rotation to stay um, kind of where it is. So we're go so while we're snapping the axis back, we're gonna figure out the point, the closest point to that plane of rotation. So we're gonna take this point that exists in three D space and then project it into our two D space that that exists here. So it might end up being like right here. So once we have that point projected, even though it's not within that unit circle, it's okay because as long as it's on that plane of existence, it's pretty easy. So once we have this point and it's it, this is origin, all you have to do is normalize it. And now it's now it's on the plane and it's on the unit circle. And at that point, we can then take this line and compare it to the zero degree angle so so we have this point and we have this this angle which is a forward direction so if we do a dot product between these two and their unit vectors that will give us a value um, between uh, negative one and one so and if it's over here it's negative one if it's over here it's a value of one if it's here the value is zero. So we're able to kind of use the dot product once we have these two lines. Um, so we can use these two dots. 
and to help calculate the angle that uh, we, that we need. So, like I said, once everything is kind of thrown into 2D, 2D space, then it actually becomes very simple. Just checking angles and using um, our forward direction as the as the origin offset. So we kind of have to compare the two. Um, so once you so like I say, if it's over that angle, we snap it back. If it's over this angle, we snap it back, and everything is all cool. It, it's cool. Um, the only thing you need to consider is which which side of the circle we are, because like I said, this is forty five degrees and that's forty five degrees. Um, when we're dealing with dot products, even though this side is is uh, one and this one is zero, this both sides are zero. So this entire half is uh, positive and this entire half is negative but we need to treat it slightly differently. So we're also gonna to have to do a second um, check to see which side of the circle are we on. And we're gonna, so, 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 uh, so this is, let's say this is our point that we were testing. So we're using this one and the forward direction to determine the angle that exists essentially going across uh, this uh, that axis or you know basically the forward direction all the way around the circle using that as the origin if we need to we also then need to find out which half it's belonged to so we take this point and also do a dot product with the up at direction so that means if we do it to that that means this actually becomes one this becomes negative one that becomes zero and that becomes zero so we so with this we know for the top half of the circle or the bottom half of the circle. So if we do this if we do a check, if everything's positive, that means we're on the upper side. If we're um, in the bottom half, we're in the, the bottom um, negative side. So if we're in the negative side, we're in the, we're in the bottom half of the circle. So this way we can determine that even though we know it's forty five degrees this way and forty five degrees this way, we know that if you're up here. In this half of the circle, that means positive 45. And if you're in, in this bottom half of the circle, you're negative 45. So, <laughs> so like I said, there's quite a bit to, to get this to work right. But um, that is essentially all the ideas of um, all the math we're going to have to do. So we have to check the axis, snap it into place. Um, we take our point our vector point and we project it onto the on 2D plane. And then from there we do a couple of checks to see um, what what angle in relation to the forward vector it has. And, um, and then which half of the circle is it on? So this way we know if we're dealing with the bottom half or the bottom half, uh, top half or the bottom half. So if, if it's over 45 degrees, I need to know am I rotating am i changing it to the negative 45 degree or am i changing it to the positive 45 degree that's real that's the only thing i need to know why why the side is because if because when i need to when they do the snapping that's when i need to know which side we're on and that should be it all right so what board is done let's look at some code so like i said the first thing we need to do is to find an axis so we we have a quintorian let's look at the code so I have something called bind rotations. This is the same, I'm just this is almost the same code from the last version, but all the math and some of the things got changed. So we defined this is the rotation that the the quintorian rotation we're trying to control and make sure it, it's it's within the constraints of the hinge that the axis of rotation is the axis of rotation and it's within the limit of the up and down direction uh, angles based off the forward direction that this actually thing points to. As um, as the axis of like the starting point, the zero point of um, rotation. All right, so new rotation. This is the rotation we're going to be testing with our constraint. So as you can see, we have our uh, we we uh, we apply set axis by rotation. We pa um, set axis by quintorian. We pass in the quintorian. All it does. Is transform the forward vector, like I said, and normalize it. So this way, and then this, then once we have the forward direction, I use up direction to determine the x, with me left and right, and then 
once I have that, I then do another cross product and I get the up direction. So this way we define the access, um, the access. So, and this is this is what we're seeing. If I, so we have this. I have this function called debug access. So we can see the axis of rotation. So green is forward, red is left, blue is up, and gray is the ro uh, the rotation that we're testing. And as you can see, it's not it does not exist between blue and green. Like because um, X is going to be our rotation of of X is going to be our rotation axis. So. Yeah, that's so that that is something like like I said. This is off base. It should it needs to be between blue and and and, and green. All right. So, and here I said I we I set um, a limit between forty five and negative forty five. So if I set limit, how do we define limit? So I, I also do a, like a limitation. So you can't go over 180 degrees up. You can't go under in either direction. So I make sure everything is at maximum of 180 degrees. Um, I convert everything to radions. And then um, let's see what else. Then I kind of set up a, let's see. All this converts that maximum like I'm trying I create like a map value did I explain why the map value? so um, a map a mapping a value between 0 and 1 so if it's if it's 0 that means it's 0 degrees if it's 1 that means 180 degrees so it's it's, it's a mapping for 180 degrees between 0 and 1 so because it's so when we're using a dot product it's easy to to determine if you're within that range. So, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking that radion and then just kind of doing the all the, the so yeah the so like I said this is more like trying to just create these values to cache so I can use that for testing. Uh, but it's like, like I said, it's a map value. It's a value I map between zero and between zero and one, and zero and 180 degrees. Um, so to do it, I, I I figure out the point on the circle that uh, the four, that that up degrees is. Um, I normalize it. I create a quaternion look rotation at it, uh, which creates the max quaternion up. So I'm also storing the max up. So this way, if you're over the limit, I just automatically return back that value. So this way, I don't need to calculate the up and down maximum value. So when, when I do a snap, I just, here's the value I give back for up, and this is the value I give back or down. So once you once the hinge constraint has been set up, all the values to testing and all the values that we're going to return for for snapping is already pre-calculated. So this way we don't have to recalculate them. So like if this like if this if this is done per frame, you want to get a lot of that math out of the way. So that's what I'm kind of doing here. So I'm just basically creating the the maximum contouring up, maximum contouring down, and then mapping that contouring on the axis of rotation between zero and one. So I can so I can kind of just use the dot product. I believe so I can map the dot product and use that value for comparison uh, so so that's what set limit is so once set limit is in we can debug the limit and I'll, why not debug plane like I said we like uh, explaining the the plane is pretty simple like I said it's it's the point and an and um, angle and the a plane is defined by a point and a direction. So point is origin, and the red line is our our direction. So so there, that circle is is our plane that we're we're being defined at. And um, so you see, so a couple of extra lines. We have yellow, which is the upper limit. So this is the this is the point maximum point. Um, of rotation that you can we can do. So if we go past this point, it needs to be snapped back to this position. And this is our low end. So this is 45 degrees 
from this point to here and 45 degrees to here. That's our limit. And like I said, we can change it. So we can say, you know, just 15 degrees in each direction. And there you go. That's 15 degrees from here. So, there, so, there, so, so, so now you can kind of visualize our axis, our plane of rotation, our limits, and the thing that we're testing. So, so here, so here, here's, so like I said, here's our problem. Here, this rotation is off by both counts. It's rotate like so. If I see here in two D, like in the kind of a two D, it's more than forty five degrees. And on top of that, it does not exist on this plane of rotation. It needs to exist on this. So its rotation is so is off. So it's kind of like coming in this in kind of diagonally this way. I think is it? Yeah, I can't tell. I'm Quartorian still confuse me. <laughs> um, but there you go. So what we need to do since it's off, we need to project this point onto the plane, and we do that by, uh, if I remember correctly, it's the dot product of this and the forward deck vector. So the green line and the gray line together, uh, we do create a dot product of it, and that creates a direction, or not a direction, uh, a distance between this point and the plane. So once we have the, uh, the distance between the point and the plane, we take the plane direction we scale it by that length, and then we add it to that point. So this point plus that direction at that length will then give us the exact spot on the plane. And once we have that exact spot on the plane, we normalize it, and then it will then it'll be shifted into the right right part uh, right to the right part of the circle. And the real reason why I'm normalizing it because we need normalized vectors to do dot products that create a values between one and negative one. So that's the reason why it's being normalized. So that's why everything here is, everything lives on at origin and everything is normalized. So it's like a unit circle, unit, unit sphere. Uh, keeps, it keeps all the math really simple. And we can do, like I said, we can do certain things. So inside our constraint apply function, we don't need to set limit anymore. You know, all, all this already more. So this part is when we do the projection. So like I said, we got dot product of the direction. So like first, like I guess the first thing I should do, and, and now I left, left an error. So let me do it here. So like the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the direction that we, uh, the quintorian that we're testing, and we're going to move it into vectors, into a unit vector. Um, or it, it's not a unit vector. At this point, it's just a planal vector because we're not normalizing. We're leaving it as is. Because um, need, we need to leave it as is so we can project it onto the plane correctly. That's kind of why I, we're, we're doing that. We're not, we're not normalizing it. So we rotate forward based on um, quintorian. So this way it has a direction. It has the gray line. That's, that's, that's what this line of code does. It shows us the gray line of rotation that we're testing. So we had to take that in the dock product of our X plane. Like I said, the red line, the dock product. And then we scale the x axis by the length. And then um, in this case, I subtract it. So I take direction and then subtract it from the v length. And then from there, I normalize it. And then I output two different samples. So if I go over here, refresh, here you go. As you can see, like I said, the, the gray line is the this is what we're testing. We project it onto the plane, and then we normalize it. And now everything is perfect. It's exactly where we, everything need, we needed to be. See now, now you can see it's on the unit circle, and we know it's off. It's past the yellow line. That's our limit. So it's more than forty-five degrees. And like I said, we didn't lose anything at all. We're 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 basically snapping it. We're, keep, we're still keeping that angle of rotation and everything else. So no, like nothing is really lost 
not too much is lost. So like you're still keeping that angle. Well, actually you're not keeping that. Angle. This proved that the angle is over the limit. So we were going to snap it back to here. And it's also going to snap the axis as well. Uh, so our normalized position that we're testing, we then, I guess, do a dot product of Z. So that black dot, the second black dot with with green, so we can figure out what angle it is betwe between. And then we map that angle between 0 and 1. So that map angle we can then use with the one we created with, with the set limit. So we made it, we made, like I said, we, the, the maximum values, we, we made a map value of it between 0 and 1. So we take the angle, we map it to 0 and 1. So this way we can test it very easily. And on top of that, like I said, we did the size. So we take the y-axis and we do a dot product with the that position that we're testing. And that will give us a value in the positive or negative. It's if it's zero, if it's zero or greater, I'm automatically going to assume you're on the top half of the circle. If you're less than zero, then you're in the negative. You're in the bottom half of the circle. So that's why I say over limit, under limit. So if you're if you're on the top side of the circle, and you are over the max mapped limit, that means you're over. And then the quintorian that that you passed in i'm going to replace its value with the maximum up rotation that's it i'm done the axis has been fixed and um yeah the axis has been fixed and its rotation has been fixed to its maximum uh, limit if you're on the bottom half of the circle and your map is also greater than the down limit again i just re replace that control you passed in with the maximum down direction. Done deal. Um, oh, okay. That's, that's what I did. It's a, not a dot product. Um, v length. That's right. I used V length because why not? Since, it's, since I have the value and it's less information. Um, v length is this line right here between the gray dot, well, the gray square and the, this black point. This is the length. If this length is greater than this real, and this is like length squared, if it's greater than this value, for some like the, I just it's, I made it like an arbitrary like this is like kind of like um I just sat there and kind of just did like a half a degree and then saw what the value was at a length squared. So if you're for some reason at half a degree over, like half a degree over, I might I'm automatically going to snap the axis. So I do the look rotation point uh, using the y-axis as the forward direction. No, y-axis as the up direction. And um, using end position, the black dot here. Like if, if, you're, if, if, you, if these two if statements pass out as false, that means you're, with, you're, you're within the limit of angle. So the only thing we need to do is just snap you into the right... Um, Access of rotation, so like I said, to do that, I just I just I rate, I'd like I, I'll use that point, that black dot right there, as my forward direction. So if that forward as my forward direction, I just say the blue is the up direction, and then from there it calculates a whole new quintorian that rotates to that black dot, and that's it. So if I return true, that means I applied a new rotation. If I return false, that means I did not apply a new rotation. So if, if, I, if I return true, that means this constraint was applied because it was, it, there, was a, there was a problem with testing rotation. And refresh. Uh, so that's it. So if I take this out, refresh. There you go. And here's like a pink line. And this is the pink line shows up when when a limit has been um, applied, like when the quintorian has changed. So the quintorian, if I if I if if the apply function says true, that means I'm gonna create this pink line to kind of so I can visually see what the new quintorian looks like that gets spit out, just to make sure the constraints are right. And there you go. It snaps it right right to where it needs to go. 
Um, if I, let's say, want, so that's in my over limit. So I can test my under limit as well. Refresh. So it's like a very close, it's a very small degree of, ch um, be so like the green is our forward and this is our maximum low. So it's just about, just about it. But I guess again, the pink line is there because that means that quintorian was modified and that's how the constraint was applied. And you see it's projecting and putting everything in right in the right place. Um, and this one creates something that's within range, but the access is off. So, if, so like I said, that's our third one. Um, and, and as you can see, it's it, it, it uh, the the line does exist between yellow and orange. And even though we snapped it into the right direction of um of the the right axis of rotation that angle hasn't really changed so like i said that angle has been pro has been projected onto this plane of rotation and it just gets carried over done deal so that is essentially your um hinge constraint and you don't have to keep it like this where you know you you can define any point of reference like this is just a simple 45 degree direction up I can you know pick any direction so if I pick any like I'm, I'm changing my axis completely refresh so my axis now is my four direction is now more in the up direction so green so that's forward my up is more going going to in the back direction and uh, my left direction is a little off. It's not off. Well, it's not off, but that's exact. That's the axis of rotation. And as you can see, the forty-five degrees has stayed. You know, it's forty-five degrees based on that four direction. And like I said, I didn't. I didn't change that point of rotation uh, that that we're testing. So it got projected, and it saw that it was over the over the the bottom limit, and it, it just re realigned it. So. Like I said, you can pick any direction and automatically the direction you pick is basically the forward direction that you want the rotation to happen. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So you, you, like I said, all you need is a quartorian that that you def want to define it as. It's like, you could like and define what the, it's, it all depends on the access, right? Basically, any it, everything gets constrained based on the access. So as long as you have your forward, your up, and your left directions perfectly set up, you, you're golden. Everything can, it gets projected, everything gets snapped, everything goes into place. And that, uh, my friends, is the hinge joint um, being applied to using vector math and um, just reapplying it back into the quartorian. Um Yeah, that's it. Uh, 33 minutes to explain it. So... <laughs> uh, <laughs> So yeah, that's it. I hope you like it. I don't, I'm not going to sit and deal dally because I got three more videos to record today. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like the math. And of course, like always, source code is free. All the source code is free. It's up on GitHub. Do whatever you want with it. This is an educational thing. So um, yeah. And uh, again, thank you for the new patron that, that uh, came by, I think, uh, a week ago or something. So thanks a lot. Uh, every dollar counts still unemployed but still coding <laughs> so see you guys in the next video like subscribe the usual bs and uh, next video we're going to do a ball constraint a lot of the, a lot of this applies we're still going to define a plane uh uh not a yeah a plane and everything else so a lot of this is going to apply again for um our ball constraint so see you guys in the next video